Edward, Gordon, and Henry. Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say beep beep hello, and Gordon would say poop poop poop. Serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer; his fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy, and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches, full of important people like the fat director, who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, hurry, hurry! He panted. Trinity truck, Trinity truck, Trinity truck! Said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute, he thought. I'll poop poop at Henry and rush through and out, into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there when crack, whoosh! He was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. His driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? Asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train any more. Oh dear," said Gordon. "We were going so nicely too. Look at Henry laughing at me." Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. "Hm," said the fact director. "I never liked these big engines. Always gone wrong. Send for another engine at once." While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him on a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try," he said. Gordon saw him coming. "That's no use," he said. "Edward can't pull the train." Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. "I told you so," said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes," said the fact director. "I will." "Will you help pull this train, Henry?" he asked. "Yes," said Henry at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steamed up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty. His boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Ooh, I am so stiff. Ooh, I am so stiff. He groaned. You better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable," said the fact director kindly. Henry came back feeling better, and they put him in front. Peep peep," said Edward. "I'm ready." Peep peep peep. Said Henry. So am I. Pull hard, pull hard, pull hard. Puff Edward. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Puff Henry. Pull hard. We'll do it. Pull hard. We'll do it. Pull hard. We'll do it. They puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move slowly at first, then faster and faster. We done it together. We done it together. We done it together. Said Edward and Henry. You done it! Hooray! You done it! Hooray! You done it! Hooray! Sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said thank you, and the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like 
blue and red. Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly, and on their way, they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he had his new coat? He is very proud of it, as all good engines are, and he doesn't mind the rain now because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over.